It's not doing much more than that. Everything else is done in software. Um, and you, you have your record. And uh, if no one believes me, after I'm done blabbing away, people can come up and check this out and check this record. But it, it is, it's, a, it's a regular piece of vinyl. Uh, I, don't ha I handle it as well as all my other pieces of vinyl. So, um, And I'll sh kind of show you what it does. First of all, here's a uh, really stupid demonstration of what you can do with a record. You know, the basic things you can do with a record and what DJs want to do is queuing up a record, backspinning record, playing it at the wrong speed. Uh, oh, I play records at the wrong speed. <laughs> one of my records, actually one of my favorite records I ever made, Panic Attack, under the name Plastic Man, sounds much better at 33, but it was recorded at 45. So, but it, on the label I put play at 33 or 45, so, you know, to each his own. So, this is what you can do with a, regu uh, a regular record. You scan through the record to find the part you want. You know, you turn the record off. All that stuff. Final scratch. Um, once uh, I'll explain this first. Let me explain the interface before I demonstrate this. Uh, what you have up here is your left and right turntable. Um, and down below you have a, a searching mechanism to find your music because of course now that you're on a computer you don't have all these records to thumb through. There you have to actually search for everything on the computer. And although it's really strange for anyone who's been DJing for a, a long period of time, once you get into searching th uh, for things on the computer it's much, much easier. Um, you know, I'll do some shameless self-promotion. So if I need one of my tracks, there's the, well, most of my tracks, except for this one right here is something that reminded me of my track, so I put my name in it just so I could find it very fast. But, uh, so, well, you know, this is the beauty of the system. Uh, you know, if anyone's ever seen any of my records, I have these really stupid little things, min, clicks, bomb. Half the time I, I can't remember what I wrote and I can't read my own handwriting and I have little marks about which side to play and all that stuff. Um, I don't have tempos like some DJs though, but that's another thing. Um, so uh, uh, one of the cool things about using a computer is you can start to tag uh, all your tracks with certain information, uh, whether it is beat per minute, whether it's musical type, house music. Uh, I have things classified as uh, classic, um, and I think where the word classic in it will show up. I have things like classic techno or Detroit classic, you know. So uh, it's, a, it's a great way of, of searching for your, for your music. But I'm going to show you more of this in a minute. So once I pick a track, I assign it to my left and right turntable. You can see on the left right now, if you can read that, it says Vitalik Pawnee EP Gigolo. Uh, you could put more information than that, but I guess I'm a minimalist, so I didn't put too much. Um, so, for all intents and purposes, now the computer thinks your left turntable is this Vitalik track, which is exactly, should be, should be this track. Um, and uh, you put your final scratch record on. Let me take your other one off, because that's the way you scratch your records. And uh, put the needle on, and hopefully it works. Now what you're going to see is on the top of the screen, the top of the turntable left, you have a squiggly kind of line w at the very, very top. What that is, that's your, if anyone's used audio on any computers before, that's kind of showing the waveform, uh, uh, a graphical representation of how the music looks. And you can see, uh, can everyone see the red line in the very top left-hand corner, top of that? Okay, that, that's actually showing where you're, where you're playing right now. Below, you've got a 30-second window of what's actually playing so you can kind of uh, see what's happening. Because one of the problems, uh, one of the things that DJs are used to is if you actually look at every record, every record looks different. So when you're playing a record and you, you look where the needle is, you can actually visib visibly see dropouts, uh, uh, different frequency changes, and you can kind of use that to remember or, or kind of sig signify when there's going to be a change, when you're going to mix in. And this is what you can see on, on the screen here. So, this is a computer, you know, playing, you know, hopefully you trust me, but, um, 
Now I can do everything that you would be able to do with a normal record. Uh, I can backspin, and everything I do, you're, do, you're going to see change on the computer. I can play at the wrong speed if I want. And of course I can use the pitch, which every good DJ needs, because you got to try and mix these damn things. Final Scratch doesn't do any of the mixing for you, so if anyone wants to buy this to become a good DJ, forget it. You know, it's just going to maybe save your back. Now the red, the red line at the very top, which is showing you where the needle is, uh, just like any other record, if I scan through the record right now, it will uh, update the point where you're playing and update everything else and play from that point on. And here you can see there's a dropout coming through the wave file. So that's the normal record. Try to find the same parts. That's the MP3 file or the computer file right now. So they're pretty much, well, they're pretty much identical. Um, you know, except it's coming from the computer. Um, of course, you can manipulate this any way you want. So if I'm really heavy handed on the record and I actually skip the needle on the record, it's going to skip the file because it's figuring out exactly what's happening from where your needle is. So it, it, it doesn't fix a heavy handed DJ either. But again, it starts to open up all these doors of, of new potential uh, because, you know, I guess you could use it to play back records like anybody else plays records back. You just play this file linear. But because you're playing now, a computer file, a digital file, you have much more potential to start to interact with it beforehand. You can take that file and uh, re-edit it or add special effects that you couldn't do live in the studio. You could reverse it. You know, I've, I, always fi I always find these tracks when I'm traveling that you know, have this great two-minute introduction, you know, really good drums, a bass line comes in, and then suddenly there's some terrible female vocal comes in, or any, it doesn't have to be female, but, uh, no, I like some, and I, I do play some vocal records, but there's a lot of them which I, I just can't get into, or, or there's something, a, a strange sound comes in, and I'm always, I, I used to buy these records, maybe buy two copies, and try and mix back and forth, and, and sometimes it's just too small, it was just worthless for me, but, you know, for those records now, I can load those into Final Scratch, I can take that part I really like, double it, triple it, or, you know, rework it in the studio just like I would with one, one of my own tracks and uh, load it back into Final Scratch and I have kind of a, whatever, my own distinct version of that track, that kind of Richie Houghton edit. Um, here's, I'll give you a kind of a little demonstration, um, a couple. This was uh, something I used, yeah, if, I, if I show you now I won't use it again, I make, make sure I do something new. Um, at one of the last parties we did, I think it was uh, either the Jack Party or the Control Party. I I really like this loop from this old Prince track, uh, 1999. So I'll, this is just a really simple example. Um, I just looped it, um, just so that I could play. It's like a five-minute loop, and I was able to bring that in. Everybody who recognized it thought perhaps I was going to play Prince, you know, and kind of created a really kind of weird tension. What the hell is he doing? You know what I mean? And, and at, at the same time, I don't have it here, but I also had the vocal samples from the beginning of that saying, um, uh, don't worry, I won't hurt you, which I thought was kind of funny because the sound system was really punishing everybody that night. And I was playing that back and forth. And uh, again, it's something which, yeah, maybe it, it would have been possible to put on CD or to put on acetate, but these, you know, this, these, these, these are things which you can do much faster now and really, really interact with n nearly instantaneously. Uh, this was actually for the...